everybody. <laughs> this is Catherine. Hello. I, how many years ago was it that I did your video? I want to say, I, I was going to say seven, but. So, yeah, 2005 oh, or 2007. Or, so actually, maybe six, yeah. This is my first stop on the Culture Crawl, just to reconnect with some old people and old artists that I did interviews with. This is my first stop. We are here at the Arts Factory. And uh, what's all the Arts Factory? Is that of a... So the Arts Factory is a city-owned building. There are over 20 artists here. We also have the Scene Shop, which do like playset design for Vancouver Opera. We have IRL Creative, who do movie props. So right. it's all creatives, um, it's all working artists. And this year there are 18 of us doing the Culture Crawl. So, okay. so realistically, I think that's the most we've had maybe ever. Oh, which okay. Is amazing, yeah. So all these artists all in one place, that's con pure con concentrated flakery. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. I was a little nervous Does coming into a place get with done that here? many. Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Depends or, if we're all here or, or is all cappuccino, lemon <laughs> and yoga. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, it's been three hours and we're all just yammering. I have a wall of Bourdain's up at the Red Accordion uh, in the West End. And it was sort of the owner's idea. I'd done Bourdain, I think three or four times since he passed away. And she thought of putting an entire wall of him up. And it's nice because he's so loved. It's just, it brings up good conversations with people, so. I've been doing a lot of um, like retro comedians from the 80s and 90s, like throwbacks to Chris Farley and John Candy. Just, just trying to do a few new things, all pop culture references. Here we are. So this is this year's projects. Um, I did a whole wall dedicated to music and then pop culture. This is a lot of movies from my childhood and stuff like that. And then just things that I'm interested in and watching constantly. Yeah, it, uh, it's nice this year. It feels like it's kind of back to normal. The last couple years with COVID and then the floods and stuff, it was uh, a little bit dismal, but this, is, this has been really good. It's like good conversations, lots of people coming through. You can feel people excited again, so it's, it's nice. Perfect. Yeah, it's been All good. Right. It's been good. All right, say goodbye, people. Bye. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Sherry. I did a I, I did a video for you. How many years ago? Four, five, Maybe four five. or five. Which which studio was that? William Clark Studio. William Clark Studios. I've moved on. People were saying, "Oh look, it's the Bike Girl," and I was like, "I can paint other things, you guys." So. <laughs> So what have you done? Well, during the pandemic and our lock-in, I did a bunch of uh, paintings that I call like my bubble girl paintings. Everyone was saying, stay in your bubble. So if you look over here, you can see I've got girls in bubbles. We were, we were at home, we were in our robes, nothing was happening, we were all in limbo. So we did these series of paintings as a kind of reflection of our COVID times. I had to paint with whatever paint or paints that I had at home because we weren't going anywhere. So I stuck to this kind of a palette. And then I've just been working on this scary little moth. And then I added a little bit of augmented reality with the moth. So if you focus on this, you can see it's flying. No, oh, that's good. How do you do that? Uh, magic. Magic. Yeah. What can I say? This project is called Flocking AI. What this project is, two robots talking to each other. The first robot is a chatbot that I created. I took this uh, chatbot called GPT-3 and filled it up with an encyclopedia of birds, a bird IDing book, and a bunch of jokes about birds. Then I had a conversation with it about creating a new fictional bird that doesn't exist yet. 
So I asked it, what kind of bird should we make and what should be the species name? First thing it said was uh, knitted sparrow. So that's this guy right here. Then I asked it, what does it like to eat and what's its favorite food? It responded with insects, seeds, and berries, but a particular fondness for coffee beans. What do you call a flock of these birds? Uh, this one was called a dark roast. After all of that, I asked the robot to combine it into a small little paragraph, which becomes a bio. So each one of the birds has their own unique bio associated with it. Then I take that bio and put it into another robot called Midjourney. Midjourney generates the, an image from the text, the bios from each of these birds. And then that generates the pictures on the wall. I did this to go play around with uh, artificial intelligence. I do a little bit of that in my work place and I was hoping to go play with it something that I could show off to my friends and show a different kind of a visual style of them. My favorite is probably this guy over here, the Richard as well as Ralph in this one over here. These are just my two favorites. I like that blotchy, un, um, uh, like out of line situation. It looks like a Ralph Steadman. He probably is where it came from too. But that's why it's called Ralph? I uh, don't know. Uh, most of the words are actually the top names in North America. A couple years ago, I did a, a video on his light sculpture things, and then uh, that never went anywhere because I fucked up and didn't br bring enough lighting. And then the footage disappeared off a hard drive, so I feel bad about that, I'm sorry. So this is the digital stained glass project that I did in 2018. This project is a bunch of panels with baffling between each pocket that allows light to stand out in the background of them. They're based off uh, Islamic geometry. I teach a course on them for the Women's and Tools Residency, which is a fantastic program at Maker Labs. Mine are much more sharp lines and geometry, while theirs are much more organic uh, shapes, like uh, turtles, etc., or more Jorah's mask. Hey, we've uh, returned to Dark Horse Workshop uh, a couple years after I did the first video uh, on this guy. What was that, 2017 or 18? It, was probably, it might have been 2017 actually. Right, yeah. yeah so so yeah, af after that, after that, his uh, YouTube channel took off and left uh, yeah. and uh, left mine in the dust, so the, uh, the student became the master. Richard here has been a friend of mine since uh, 96. Yeah, probably around that. Probably 1996. Around that. Yeah, 1996. And uh, so he's uh, stopped working in the film industry, well, mostly, and mostly, he's actually yeah. spent most of his time dedicated to, to a brand new YouTube channel uh, that has really taken off. It's actually yeah. quite inspiring, and it's, uh, I'd like to think I had a part in that, but I don't think I did. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, everybody along the way has a little part in uh, people's lives. It's always good. Um, yeah, and this year I started streaming more, so that one more is in like, at all. I think I mm -hmm. did one stream last year just to play around and now this year I'm doing a stream every Friday. I have, I'm doing less film now. Uh, I'm doing a lot more YouTube patterns and tutorials, videos, that kind of stuff. It started to take off really when I started really f focusing on being able to l let people make the stuff that I'm building in those videos with my patterns and art. So uh, that's when it kind of skyrocketed. I just need to keep on it 
I'm Dark Horse Workshop everywhere, so my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Dark Horse Workshop. Hey, special shout outs to all my uh, channel members, which has been a new thing. I'm, I'm actually coming back to your question about new things. I started streaming this year on my channel. So I stream every Friday and uh, my membership base is growing and my Patreon's growing. So shout out to all my patrons and YouTube members. <laughs> You're actually one of the very first artists I ever interviewed. That's right, in our house. Yeah, yeah, the Lady of the Glass house, the, uh, the stained glass art that you were doing. Yeah, so, I, I don't do that hardly anymore. Well, I really don't do that anymore. No, I, you know, after 27 years, I kind of got sick of it. But I was a member at Terminal City Glassworks right. across the street. Mm -hmm. And um, then it got to my <laughs> asthma, and then, of course, the pandemic happened. But I do mostly decorative soldering on drinking horns and... Uh, goblets and tankards and then I make pendants and it's still um, my business name is still Mystic Glass Designs even though I don't really do much glass anymore so I'm thinking about changing my name. Finally get to see Gideon Hay. His doors are finally open and the man himself is present and he's defying all the rules of Culture Call by opening his own studio because apparently you're not allowed to open your own studio on Culture Call unless the Culture Call gods say it's okay. Unless they get paid. Unless they get paid. Yeah. So basically you've got to bribe somebody else, a third party, to exist. Yeah. He won't be uh, bullied by big art. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Fight the power. Yeah. Gideon's open, and I've wanted to do his video for a couple of years now because I've been really interested in his maquette and some of his stuff. And I kept promising I'd come by and shoot him one day, so it uh, looks like today's the day. Hi there. My name's Gideon Hay. Um, I'm a sculpting, figurative sculpture artist uh, living in Vancouver, making weird stuff. Generally, I make uh, most of my things out of plasticine, um, and then I make molds, silicone molds, um, and then I cast them in resin or other materials. I have been working on, in various films uh, and TV shows for, oh God, since uh, X-Files in the 90s, um, so for quite a long time. I guess it would be like 30 years. I've just always been into uh, monsters and creatures, uh, you know, ever since uh, Ray Harryhausen films that I would watch uh, as a kid and um, Star Wars was a pivotal film for me, you know. Um, just anything that had like creatures or, uh, you know, weird monsters, you know. So what about your teaching? What are you teaching? Um, I'm, I'm teaching all aspects of different, uh, well, all different aspects of sculpture basically. So uh, we're talking um, making teeth, um, like prosthetic teeth, making maquettes, like this lady here, um, making relief sculptures, like this octopus, you know. Lots of different aspects of, uh, of sculpting and mold making too. I would actually like to do some YouTube videos on this, instructional YouTube videos mostly, but uh, Video is just generally about sculpture. Here's the main thing with sculpture or any kind of artwork. You have to realize that your sculpture is going to go through an awkward phase and it's going to look terrible for uh, a long while and you have to kind of work through that. And it will become cool and you will like it at the end if you keep working on it. But if you quit, then it's never going to get done and you'll never experience that satisfaction of oh look at what I made you know so uh, yeah my advice would be keep going don't get discouraged you know as it looks like crap you know
Okay, so there we go. There we have it, uh, Culture Crawl 2022. I didn't get to do all the locations, uh, mostly because I didn't have any time to do all the locations, but uh, that's just the thing. You can't possibly do everything in the Culture Crawl because there's like 100 locations, like 100 artists, so like thousands of artists, so thousands of studios. So you can basically, wherever you get to is where you get to, and that's, uh, that's where you were meant to be. It's really good to know that Vancouver is filled with creative people and a lot of people who are really driven to produce something beautiful or interesting or unique. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people in this world who will just uh, sit at home and watch TV and never actually do anything useful with their lives. So it's really, it's really uplifting to meet and see all the people who, who really put the effort into making everybody's lives a lot better. You know, even even if the art piece it doesn't resonate with you, the, the spirit is still there that uh, you want to give out to the world and you want to create something and make something beautiful for people to enjoy. You don't want to just want to consume the world around you, but you instead want to actually build the world around you, contribute to it in a meaningful, beautiful way. Anyway, that's it for this vlog. We'll see you on the next one.